Uh, I'm Daniel Dyla. Um, I'm on the OpenTelemetry Governance Committee. Uh, I'm also a maintainer of OpenTelemetry JavaScript. I've been working on it for uh, a little over four years now, uh, and I'm a contributor to OpenFeature. Hi there. Uh, I'm Mike Beamer. I'm a product manager at Dynatrace. Um, I'm involved in open source contributions and also a member of the Governance Committee on OpenFeature. And you probably, or you may or may not have heard of Open Features, so I'll really quickly cover what that is. Um, it's, it's an open specification for providing vendor agnostic, uh, community driven feature flags. Um, so it, it works with uh, commercial vendors, uh, in house solutions, and maybe something, uh, you know, closed source, open source, whatever the case may be. There's nice integrations to uh, management tools. And then if you're not familiar with feature flags themselves, uh, I just want to give a really, really quick level set here. So the main idea is it's a pivot point in your code. Um, it's something that can be updated uh, without a, a source code change or without a restart to your servers themselves. So it provides a lot of benefits that we'll cover in just a second here. So the reasons you may want to use a feature flag is to help coordinate feature releases. So you can kind of help decouple uh, a binary release from a feature release. Um, it's really common for like trunk-based development. Um, you can also reduce the risk of a feature release. You can do that in a lot of ways. One way is to um, control the impact radius. It's something we'll show in the demo in a little bit. But you could basically enable the feature for a subset of users, uh, either very specifically or like randomly select a bucket of users to show a feature to. And then finally, as you kind of get more, uh, I guess, mature in your feature flag usage, you may run experiments. So you may want to have one, two, three, you know, different variations that you'd like to test. You'd like to measure that impact and then decide if it's something that you'd like to, to keep. But with all the benefits of feature flags, it does introduce a few challenges. So uh, in this uh, diagram that we have here, we're showing like a really highly distributed like microservice architecture. And so we're making lots of calls. It's already very complex, but if you start adding feature flags in there, you can, can change. You could change like code paths at runtime, something that maybe hasn't been tested. Um, you could also have multiple flags evaluated um, on a single request. So it just it becomes. It takes something that was complex and makes it even more complex. And so that's really where monitoring comes into play. And I'll hand it off to Dan to talk about that more. All right, so as we all know, monitoring is already critical to the deployment and running of our infrastructure. But as Mike said, with feature flags, it becomes even more complex uh, and becomes even more important. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about OpenTelemetry. Uh, OpenTelemetry is a collection of APIs and SDKs uh, in various languages. I think we have 13 now, maybe more, uh, used to collect telemetry data uh, in a vendor agnostic way uh, so you can ship to whatever telemetry vendor that you have. Uh, there's a few basic types of, of uh, telemetry signals. I'm just going to talk about uh, events, traces, and metrics. Uh, and for the purposes of open telemetry, events and logs are more or less the same thing. They're actually transported in the same way, collected in the same way. So first I'll start with what is an event. Uh, an event is any point in time. Uh, sounds obvious, but uh, sometimes not. Uh, it allows for sort of arbitrary uh, uh, collection of any individual point in time with attributes attached to them. Uh, attributes are used to describe your data and used together with the uh, Open Telemetry Semantic Conventions. Your backend can understand what that data is uh, to enable analysis later on. Uh, events typically don't require a lot of processing on the client, uh, which makes them very cheap to collect. Uh, but because they can be a lot of data, uh, it can be more expensive to transport them and store them. Uh, and when you do analysis later, sometimes it can require scanning over large sets of data in order to uh, do analysis. Uh, the second type of telemetry I'm going to talk about is traces. Um, a trace is a collection of spans which describes a transaction in your system. Uh, a span is essentially any operation with a start and an end time. So in that way, it can really be thought of as two events, the start span event and the end span event. Uh, again, very similar to events, uh, data is stored as attributes, and these are linked together in a tree structure. Uh, it does require propagation of what we call span context in order to link these all together later, which introduces a little bit of complexity on the client side uh, and also some additional processing restrictions. 
uh, but because it has very specific meaning, it allows for specific analysis types uh, later on. Uh, and finally, we have metrics. Uh, metrics is typically numeric data aggregated from a series of events. So for example, you have failure rates. Each individual failure may be an event, uh, but the failure rate, which is how often they happen, is a metric. Uh, most often, you would throw away the original uh, metrics that you uh, collected in order to generate that metric, although not always. Um, and typically, there are some restrictions involved here. Uh, attributes are typically more restricted. Very often you have to control uh, your cardinality of your attributes, which is uh, how many different values each attribute has. Uh, it can be possible to generate metrics later from events and traces, although this moves a lot of processing to the back end, which can be expensive. So here we have a quick summary. Uh, on the left we have events, and on the right we have metrics. And this goes sort of from more unprocessed and raw data to more processed and aggregated data uh, with traces somewhere in the middle. And you can see on the unprocessed data, there's very little uh, client uh, processing restrictions, uh, and it opens up a lot of analysis options later on uh, at the expense of storage, uh, transport, processing, and all of that. And on the right, you have aggregate data, uh, which is more efficient from a transit and storage perspective. Uh, but because you may have thrown the original events away, uh, you really need to know what types of analysis you want to do in advance. And in, in the middle, we have traces. So when you're deciding which signals to use, you can ask yourself several questions, like how much data will I be collecting? If you're collecting events and logs, it may end up being a lot. Uh, if you're collecting metrics, a lot of those can be condensed down into uh, fewer data points uh, in order to save on processing costs. Uh, what types of analysis do you need to do later? If you don't know, events may be a good option for you because it opens up a lot of opportunities to make those decisions later down the line, although obviously you do have to stall, uh, store all of your events. Uh, is your data structured or unstructured? Again, events are very flexible. Traces and metrics a little bit less so, especially as you move toward the metric side. Uh, but if you already really know what types of analysis you're trying to do, what your data looks like, sometimes the cost savings of metrics can be helpful. And obviously, am I collecting numeric data or some other type? But most often, you want to collect more than just one signal type, as many as possible, really. Instrumenting with open telemetry is fairly easy. Uh, it varies language to language, but typically you have a resource which identifies your application, exporters which tell your SDK where to send all of your telemetry data and how to get it to your backend, and instrumentations. Here I have the HTTP and Express instrumentations as an example. Instrumentations hook into common libraries in order to generate telemetry data, uh, but if your library is not supported or if you're doing something custom, you can always do custom telemetry as well. A good place to look for instrumentation libraries is on the OpenTelemetry website. If you go to the uh, ecosystem tab and click on registry, you can type in the name of your library and see if there's a supported uh, telemetry library, library for it. So let's hear an example. All right, thanks, Dan. So really what I want to do now, uh, we've kind of set the stage on what a feature flag is, um, what telemetry and open telemetry are, and then we really want to combine those two to make feature rollouts safer. So what we're going to do today is we're working with this hypothetical sneaker sales shop. Um, in this, uh, they have a really simple architecture. They just have a couple of users. They hit a load balancer. They have the sneaker shop service um, and a database. And it's doing just fine. So the response times are fairly reasonable. Uh, everything's good to go. Um, but basically, as load increases, so the site becomes more popular, they're selling more shoes, uh, the response time is becoming worse. So what we end up doing, uh, we need to look into this a little bit more. So we can dr drill into a trace. So that's uh, referencing back to what uh, Dan was just talking about. Um, looking at a distributed trace, this is just a, the collection of spans, it becomes quite uh, apparent that the database is actually the culprit here. So in this case, it's almost a one second response time for this database call. So now we know what the problem is, we know it's the database, how can we go about fixing it? 
So in this case, we're just going to add some read replicas. We'll scale horizontally this database. In order to do that, what we want to do is put the new read access behind a feature flag. Uh, we want to enable the read replica for just a small subset of users uh, to try to con control the impact radius. Um, we're going to look at the impact um, using open telemetry and a couple uh, uh, monitoring techniques. We're going to go ahead and enable the read replica for everyone, and then it's always considered a best practice to remove the feature flag once it's no longer needed. All right, so we'll start off by adding the feature flag to your code. Uh, this is an example um, from Open Feature. This is using the Open Feature SDK, and I'm just going to call out here that uh, you're seeing we have the use read replica or use db read replica uh, feature flag identifier. So this is what's referenced in the feature flag management tool that you're using. Um, I'm also going to quickly call out context. So this is a way to supply runtime information to the feature flag system and it allows you to use this as like a pivot point um, to make pretty advanced targeting rules and decisions um, in run or during the runtime. And then finally we're going to use the results of the feature flag evaluation to determine which database connection we're going to use. Next, we're going to tie it back to what Dan was just referring to earlier, so open telemetry. Um, open feature has the open telemetry hooks. It's a way to tap into the life cycle of a feature flag evaluation. And in this case, basically what we're doing is we're adding uh, an open telemetry event. It's actually an open telemetry span event um, onto the request. And that basically allows us to associate a feature flag evaluation with a bunch of metadata with the overall request. And so we'll look into that in a little bit. Uh, but it becomes a very powerful technique for uh, detecting the uh, impact a feature has on the rest of your system. Uh, finally, we're going to go ahead and enable the feature. This is just showing uh, like a JSON representation of what a flag configuration may look like. Um, you can, depending on the system that you use, it could be a, a text file or it could be a nice like rich GUI uh, in order to, to control this. One thing worth noting is this is the identifier, same one that you're referencing in code. Um, and we're also just enabling it for 25% of sessions. Um, so we're going to start by, by just releasing it to just a subset of users. When we do that, unfortunately, we see that you know, the, the, we had failures. Something went wrong. Um, thankfully, we only enabled it for just a subset of users, so the impact was relatively small. And because we're using feature flags, we're able to basically roll it back almost instantaneously. Um, we didn't have a a binary that we deployed that we had to redeploy the old version or something. So it's, it's nearly instantaneous, and we're able to abort it, and then roll back to normal, almost instantaneous, controlling the blast radius. Now we can go ahead and look at what went wrong. So we're cap we captured all the telemetry. We can actually inspect it later. It doesn't matter if it's act actively an issue. Um, we can look back in the past to start figuring out what went wrong. So in this case, what we're doing is we're actually going to look at all of the requests to our backend uh, and split by the different feature flags that we're looking at. So the, the hypothesis, of course, is we enabled the feature flag and something failed. So in this, this example, we're looking at the traces combined with a flag evaluation to very quickly identify that it only failed when the feature flag was enabled. From there, we could look at the uh, exception message and we could aggregate that as well. So when we start looking at something like that, it becomes really apparent that node three in the database uh, was the issue, which is also why we weren't seeing 100% failures. Um, one thing that you may see in open telemetry is a thing called an exemplar, and it's basically like a representative trace. So here, we can actually use the exemplar to um, see a trace that, that basically represents this you know, 32 uh, count, uh, error count failure. Drilling into the trace itself it becomes very apparent and very obvious that that was indeed the, the issue. You can see that the database call failed, and in this case, the, the connection refused on database three. So with that information, we can go ahead and work with the appropriate team. They can look at node three, they can try to figure out what in the world went wrong, and hopefully fix it. Uh, once the issue was uh, investigated, addressed, and we're ready to relaunch, uh, we can go ahead and try again. So basically, in this scenario, this is the feature flag's off. Uh, all of the traffic's going to the old, slow database connection. Um, we're ready to go, so we enable it for 25% of the users. Um, notice that there's no failure rates, thankfully, so we don't have to abort the, the rollout this time. Um, you can also see the, the throughput on the read replica has increased by approximately 25%. 
and the response time is quite stable and quite a bit faster. So that's the ex uh, expected experience. So we're going to go ahead and continue out with the rollout. In this case, you know, roughly 50% of the traffic has been split. Um, and you can see the response times are looking stable on the read replica and, and decreasing on the, the slow database due to the, the lack of throughput now. Still looking good. So we go ahead and roll it out for the final, or for, this, for 75 percent of the users. Same deal. Everything looks good to go. So we're feeling confident. We can go ahead and enable this feature for everyone. You can see the throughput is completely shut off for people accessing the slow database. 100 percent throughput for people accessing the new read replica, and the response times are stable as we expect. So I'm going to hand it over to Dan to, to summarize what we just talked about. Yeah, so as Mike mentioned, uh, we rolled out an important performance fix that was affecting all of our users, uh, but we controlled the, uh, the impact of problems with the potential fix to a very small number of users. Uh, we used OpenTelemetry to validate our assumptions, both with the problem and with the fix, uh, and then when we were confident, we rolled that feature out for all of our users. And of course, we'll continue to monitor impact uh, into the future and we'll eventually clean up the feature flag so that it's no longer in our system and shut down the old database. That's it. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're happy to hear any questions, if anybody has any. Yeah, yeah. Um, one question about the, the this. Is it possible to um, leverage, I would say, the, uh, an issue, in a bug that you face on, uh, on the new feature and uh, automate the fallback to the previous version? You're talking about automated rollbacks of the feature flag? Yeah, I mean, for example, the user A is uh, redirected to the new feature. At the first try, he fails because uh, the, 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 new, the new feature is, uh, uh, is KO. And then uh, with the retry uh, button, the next request that he, he will do could be, uh, could be fall back to the previous one that is working. Is it something that it could be automated? Oh, I, or? I see. Mm. So you're saying you have a user that they go to your website, something's broken, they reload it, you want mm. the old version the exactly. second time. Mm. Uh, so open feature defines targeting rules. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe Mike is probably a better person to, to answer what specific rules are available from that perspective. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends. So if you look at Open Feature, like we work with a lot of different uh, flag management tools, and it really just depends on the, the implementation that you use. Mm. Um, most of them are quite sophisticated, though, so you could uh, build some pretty advanced targeting rules. Mm. And then you could also, if you pair that with like a telemetry tool, you could come up with some some automation, which I think of what you're getting at is like you could detect an issue and automatically maybe change the targeting rule to to minimize the impact or completely eliminate the uh, the impact. Okay, and because you don't have to redeploy, it's it's <laughs> quick, it's instant. Exactly. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Hello, thank you very much. It was actually a great talk. I was asking exactly the same question on some previous Open Feature talk uh, this week. And then you just answer it by giving your talk. So my question is, uh, I'm not sure if you support this, but I, I assume that we can do several feature flag at the same time, uh, meaning support not a, as an open feature, but having a telemetry on uh, open feature flags, like including feature flags as a dimensions in your metrics. Uh, so how to fight cardinality in this case? Because assuming if you have several feature flags together, multiplying by number of your machines and everything else, that will be a challenge at some point. So is there any yeah. best practices or suggestions how to run experiments and not to hit this problem and still get some valuable results? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So in the demo, actually, I was not using a metric that was collected. So the metric was like essentially generated on read from trace information. Um, so there, that, that's basically how you could work around a metric explosion. Um, because exactly like you said, if you basically generated a new metric for every combination of feature flags, uh, it's not that, not that scalable. Um, so that, that's where the, those things tie together. Hopefully that, that makes sense. Yeah, just to double check, so this 
feature doesn't support metrics. I mean, you always generate only traces, and then we need to post-process them. So we do both. So that was kind of what Dan was referring to. So it kind of is up to you to choose. Like, if you have a sophisticated enough system to be able to like analyze traces on demand and slice and dice that, that may be a way to go because you're capturing more information. It's like more, more of the discovery of the unknown unknowns. Um, if you know, like, if you need something a little bit simpler, you could just collect open telemetry metrics, but you're a little less flexible. Um, you wouldn't be able to tie that back to like individual requests, for example. And it, of course, depends how many feature flags do you have, how many variants do you have for each flag. If you have a controlled number, then you already know what the cardinality might be. Uh, if you have an unknown number, that's where an event may be better than a metric for you. Thank you. You're welcome. In the example you showed, uh, where you showed the error rate per surface and feature flag, is that something uh, that's already supported by current tooling? Uh, yeah, all the examples I showed were, were all real. So it really just depends on the, the uh, you know, monitoring tool that you're using. Um, but all the data was collected with open telemetry, and it just depends on kind of the sophistication of your you know, uh, observability tool, essentially. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on Friday. Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, enjoy Paris.